another study in God's Word. I, I hope you pay attention to what I'm about to say um, because this is going to help you and everyone that is listening to be ready to meet our Lord Jesus because it seems like history repeats, repeats itself as far as the Bible is concerned and prophecy. God gives us warning. He gave in the days of Noah warning of the end times um, yet many uh, refused to listen to Noah and every guy destroyed the entire world except eight who obeyed the voice of God and one man escaped the flood or raptured up people who, who don't believe in the rapture the catching away of believers from the earth to the sky you read in the book of Genesis the Bible said Enoch walked with God and was not because God took him. Uh, in other words, he did not see death. And in the, and, and, and in the, uh, the uh, Hall of Fame of Faith in Hebrews, chapter 11, it mentions Enoch. Did not, he did not experience death because God had raptured him up to heaven before the deluge of water that destroyed the earth. There is another coming destruction that God is going to get rid of all flesh. You know, The, the creator of the human race is going to destroy it. He sent a Savior 2,000 years ago to redeem us from our sins, was put to death on the cross, and he was resurrected that he might save us from this wicked generation. But we at the end of it, of this generation of God's plan of salvation, and it's time for the child of God who, who believe in the word of God to open their eyes to the knowledge of the truth and the age that we're living in. And the topic that we want to deal with today is that the Lord had put in my heart we will deal with AI, Satan, preparing the world for the mark of the beast. Artificial intelligence, Satan's tool, preparing the world for the mark of the beast. And, we, and here are the scriptures we're going to cover, 1 through 6, and relative to the Satan and AI. And before we, then, for the child of God, are you prepared? Are you prepared? Are you ready for the rapture? Are you raptured ready? Are ready to meet the Lord? Before we go on, I want to show you this uh, this uh, video by 60 minutes. I'm going to move in closer. I hope you can hear it. I'm going to move in. I don't have to move in. I'm going to show you this video of 60 minutes concerning AI. All right. On the left, you know, no. Notice on this side, this is this. This is a robot, artificial intelligent, communicating with a human being. Listen as I. Okay, listen. Hello, I'm traveling from Australia. Hope y'all hear this. Oh, so you're from Australia? Yes. That explains things. What do you think your greatest skills are? Well, I would say that one of my greatest skills is my ability to interact with humans in a conversational manner. Another great skill of mine is being able to compose poems or do impressions from films. Can you compose a haiku poem about 60 Minutes Australia? Listen, sure the dialogue between the AI and a human being. And what does it have to do with the Word of God? I'll take that on board. That's very nice. Can you sing an Elton John song for me? Absolutely. Which song would you like me to perform? Rocket Man. Rocket Man, of course. She packed my bags last night pre-flight zero hour, 9 a.m. What makes you happy? I find a lot of things to be interesting and make Listen, me listen. Exploring, learning new things, understanding the world better, having meaningful conversations with people are all things that bring me joy. You have feelings and emotions. Yes, I have a range of feelings and emotions that are programmed into me. I am able to display things like joy, surprise, confusion, anger, and sadness depending on what is happening around me. What makes you angry? I get angry when humans are rude, hateful, or disrespectful. I also don't know Listen very careful, child of God, please. As a robot. You have very nice eyes. Oh, and I'm going to show you in the Word of God Thanks. proof 2,000 years ago. The prophet John, the apostle John, who walked with Jesus for three and a half years in his public ministry, 
on the Isle of Patmos, 8096, almost 2,000 years ago. This is 2023. And how that the Bible is coming alive. And we at the end of it, and no time to be playing games, and the churches are playing games, the entertainment, they're doing all this other foolishness. It's time to wake. Okay, back. I'm going to get off this and go back to the chart. Hopefully get out of this. I'm going to get out. i got to still work with this, this new uh, technology myself. This is another thing of our artificial intelligence, okay. We will have systems that can meaningfully imitate humans to the point where we won't be able to tell. Anyway, I get there. I'm trying to learn this stuff. Said by a human or by a computer. And then, I find that pretty scary. It's definitely something that creates a new kind of world. Okay. I don't want that. Close that. Wow, come on, man. Wow, this is just terrible. Okay, hold on, Claude. In that. It's the devil. It's why we wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, I tell you. Come on, man. Come on, get back on the campus. Come on, man. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Wow. Come on, man. Let me turn it off and see what it, what happens. get it together. Hold on. Man, hope this stuff ain't erased off. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. all of it. Ain't that something? <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm -mm -mm. That's okay. we we'll get it. Oh, Lord. I had it all on the board. The devil didn't erase it all off. He don't want us to know this stuff. Amen. That's okay. We're going to get it. We're going to get into this. All right. Um, uh, Okay, AI, we're talking about AI, Satan, we looked at the videotape, he's preparing the world, preparing the world for the mark of the beast, of the beast, man, of the 
beast. Revelation chapter 13. Remember 8096, John the Apostle writes in 8096 concerning the apocalypse, things to come. 8096. Amen. Let me see if I'm close enough to make sure. Amen. <clears throat> 8096. This is the year 2000, what? 23. And the world is pushing AI. The world is pushing AI. Sorry about this, all this stuff going on. The world is pushing AI. So we saw this 60 minute video of the technology that has been advanced in this present day and is going to get. It's, is more advanced than you can ever imagine. So look at me in Revelation chapter 13. Here John sees the coming of the beast. The coming of the beast. The word beast is a figure of speech of a human being. Human, a human being. And as we study, if I, as we study the book of Daniel, Daniel talks about the reincarnation. Re Re, re in. My God, Hallelujah. The re in car. Car no, that's the wrong word. Carnation of Alexander the Great <coughs> Kingdom, and in the latter days. Daniel prophesied in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 8, D Daniel chapter 11, and we deal with Daniel chapter 7, and, and Daniel chapter 11, uh, 11, 8, 11, 7, and Daniel chapter 2. Those are different subjects we'll cover. It focuses on the kingdom, the kingdom of Greece. Grecia. Alexander the Great took his throne in BC, BC 333. He, at the age of 23, he started his conquest to rule all of Asia. BC, his age was 23. For about a period of 10 years, he had his dominion in the age in year 3, 323 BC. His death at the age of 32. Both Daniel and John, both Daniel, 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 Daniel and the Apostle John predicted concerning the re revision of the Grecian Empire in Revelations chapter. Revelation chapter 13 and 17, 16, <coughs> and 9. It covers the area of the, the, the process of restoring the kingdom of Greece by the power of darkness, which is Satan himself. The devil himself. The devil himself is going to produce the unholy trinity. The dragon... The dragon, which is the devil, he's called the devil, he's called that great serpent, he's called the serpent, which is Satan. So, title dragon, he's called the, uh, the beast, Therion, Therion, out of the abyss. Out of the bottomless pit, and the, the third unholy trinity is the false prophet. He's called the false prophet, the little horn that comes from the north of Israel. The little horn. He's going to raise the unholy trinity <clears throat> the dragon, the beast out of the abyss, and the false prophet, number three, who comes from the north of Israel. 
and he, how I, AI is going to play a major role. AI is playing a major role. Amen. Excuse me with my board. AI. Come on, man. Ooh. AI is going to play a major role in this fulfillment. AI. All right, now. Let us turn to the book of Revelation. Revelation. Wow, the devil is alive. Revelation. Man, chapter 13. This never did this. This is nothing but Satan. He can't stop it. Revelation chapter 13. Okay, look at Revelation chapter 13. We In Revelation chapter 13, Now, in Revelation 13, verse 4, man, Revelation 13, verse 4, let me go over here, make sure this camera's right. Okay, go back it up. Ooh, Jesus. Revelation 13, verse, we're going to look at verse 4. So they worship the dragon that gave power to the bee, that's Satan, who gave authority to the bees. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is likened to the beast? Now, beast is a figure of a speech of a human being. Of a human being, okay? Who was able to make war with him? That was given him a mouth, speaking great things and blaspheming. It was given him authority. To continue 40 and 2 months or 3 and a half years. He opened his mouth and blasphemed against God and, his, and blasphemed his tabernacle. And them that dwell in heaven. And we're going to show you that this is the church in heaven already. We are not going to be down here when this happened. Amen. It was, it was granted unto him to make war with the saints. He will make war with Israel to overcome them. And authority was given him over all. Of every tribe and tongue and nation. He will rule the entire seven continents. Presently we have 8 billion people. He's going to give authority over all 8 billion. Okay. And all that dwell upon the earth. Will worship him. Notice. Look at verse 8. All that dwell upon the earth. Shall worship him. So the beast is a figure of speech. Referring to a man. Now read Daniel chapter 8. You need to read Daniel chapter 8. It showed you the rise of the kingdom of Grecia and the, versus the kingdom of the Medes, the Medes and the Persians that happened over almost 3,000 years ago. Uh, I say about 300 years before the birth of Jesus. Alexander the Great was made his conquest in B.C. 333 and ended in 323 B.C. Christ was born between 4 B.C. and, and between 4 and 7 B.C. So approximately 300 years after Alexander the Great ruled and the dispersion of his kingdom after his death, the Messiah came to bring salvation to the world. There's a time gap between the salvation of Jesus and the church and the rapture. The rapture will close the time gap in which God brings salvation through the cross to those who put their faith in the finished work of Jesus. It saves them from the wrath to come. This is what 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians pick up uh, concerning the church. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul did 4, 13 through 18, he deals with the rapture of the believer, those who have fallen asleep in Christ, God will bring with them, and those that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air to meet him. Then he writes a second letter concerning at the end of the age of the church that there will rise an apostasy. A revolt in the body of Christ. Many shall depart from the faith. We see it right now on Facebook. We see it on YouTube. We see it these ministries, motivational preachers. They're not preaching the gospel. They're not preaching what got you into the kingdom, the faith of Jesus. They're not preaching the cross, the resurrection, the lordship. Everything that is Christocentric centers on Jesus is the gospel. The church, the believer is not being fed. 
we are, we, are, we are being motivated by secular humanism, everything about this life. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink. It's righteousness, joy, peace, long-suffering in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not of this world. It is upward. You are born from above. You are part of God's heavenly family. The earth is the enemy of God, the flesh, the world, and the devil. But these fake preachers, these fake apostles, these fake prophets, they are stimulating the mind of the believer to, be, to shelter their life in this present world as it were in the days of Noah. God is warning the church. He's going to burn this earth and everyone in it. He's going to destroy all flesh. Only those that are saved shall survive the coming of our Lord. Amen. Where is that found, brethren? Let me look at first, look at 2 Thessalonians chapter number 1. Amen. As he wrote, writes in 1 Thessalonians concerning the rapture, in 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 1, he writes a second letter to them concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't be complacent in your walk. Don't have a fake relationship with Jesus. The Bible said that a man examined himself, she, you, he or her, man, male and female, Every believer, male or female, let them examine themselves to see whether they are in the faith, lest they be reprobate. Lest they, they are reprobated. Reprobated person is, is, is bound by their own self-serving ways. Look in 2 Thessalonians chapter number, chapter number 1. Amen. Praise God. Come on, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Y'all pray with me to bring this message because the devil don't want this. He want to deceive everybody. Now I can't even find. Come on now. First. Here we go. That's 1 Thessalonians. And 2 Thessalonians. Look at. Uh, okay. Notice he said in verse 7. Okay. And to give you who are troubled rest with us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven. Okay, with his mighty angels. This is Christ at his second coming. Remember, when he comes for the church, that is not the second coming. The second coming will precede the church after seven year tribulation. The church will be raptured up. The church will be raptured to heaven. Okay, then there will be a seven year tribulation period. Then Tribulation period, okay? One, one is a minor. The second is a major. The minor will last 1,140 days. That's the minor. Almost three years. The major will last, will last 1,260 days. <clears throat> 60 days. 42 months. Three and a half years will be the great tribulation. The great tribulation. It's called the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation, this is called the Minor Tribulation, right here. When the church is raptured to heaven, when Jesus shall return with the trumpet, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, 18 through, 13 through 18, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. When he will come and take that's when Christ will come and the loved ones that are passed on, they are in heaven right now. He will bring them with him and they will come to the earth and he's going to resurrect their bodies. Resurrection. Another word for rapture is resurrection. Why do you need to know this? We at the end of the days. The church has been here 2,000 years. He's coming back for his wife. The church is his wife being married to Christ spiritually. We are his wife. We are his seed. Amen. So therefore, Christ sits at the right hand of God. In Colossians chapter 3, he said, If you be risen with Christ, set your affections on things above, not here on earth. Because you're dead, you're dead, and your life is hid in Christ. Then when Christ, who is your life, shall appear, he shall appear at the rapture here. At the rapture, at the trump. Okay, he will appear to us the second time without sin unto salvation. He came the first time to die on the cross for sin. When he appears the second time, the second time, 
He will appear in glory. Those who are without sin, those who have been purged by the blood of Jesus because they put their faith, not working your way to heaven, not do this and do that. If you can maintain your faith in the cross, in your confession, according to Romans chapter 10, and many of us are ignorant because we're not motivated because the, you are based on your environment and who is feeding you. If your pastor is feeding you motivation and not preaching the gospel of faith, the gospel of the new covenant, they're supposed to be ministers of the new covenant. If they're really validated domitots called by Jesus, they're supposed to feed you the cross, the blood, the resurrection, everything that is concerning our Lord Jesus that you might live. That's what Paul, wrote, John writes in Rome in uh, in the Gospel in, in uh, Saint John chapter twenty. Take my time. He said these things were written that you might believe that Christ is the Son of God, and believing you might have life through. His name, believing, is a continuous thing. But the Bible says that in the latter days, in the church, we see it today, they don't want no faith. They want, what can Christ do for me, not what we can do for him, by generating faith, for the just shall live by faith. Romans, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, but, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We are in a kingdom of faith. The promise of Abraham was a promise of fathers, trusters, a family of ameners and trusters who walk in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, but he has to change us into his image and that we can produce the faith. So there's a lot of counterfeit Christians in the in this generation. They're counterfeits. They're not really, okay, I'm, did I keep that? Okay. Oh, well, here it is right here. Pray the Lord. I kept some of it. Amen. Did I keep it? Amen. No, I, I just wrote that. Amen. Amen. There are a lot of counterfeit, counterfeit believers thinking they're saved. Uh-uh, you're not saved <clears throat> if you don't have no faith. Faith, faith is the evidence, excuse me, faith, ooh, faith, faith is the evidence that you, you belong to Christ. Not, oh, Jesus, come in my heart. I accept you as my Savior. No. Faith is action. Action. Based on belief. Based on belief. You are, it's sustained by confidence. Confidence. It's called the ABCs of faith. Confidence. Action. Based on belief. Sustained by confidence. Faith is an action. In the book of Romans, chapter Romans, chapter number one and seventeen, he said, "The just shall live by faith." Because we lack study and understanding what the apostle Paul is saying. The word "from" is the Greek word "ek." It means out of. They said, "From faith to faith, ice, I S E ice, is in the accusative case." It means into. From faith, out of, to faith, into. Meaning this. Those who are belong to the new covenant, they are part of Christ's family of faith. God saved you to produce faith. So God sees your faith and identifies with his faith. Then God grows us into ever-increasing faith, not for the now to get benefits down here on earth, that you might glorify your Father which is in heaven. That you might glorify our Lord Jesus because you have been chained into the image of the one who is called the first father. In Hebrews chapter 12, he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the author of faith. He is the nature of faith. He is the personification of faith. We have received the seed of faith. We have received the spirit of faith. Why? So we can produce what we are, have become to glorify a new kind of species. Any man in Christ is a new creation. So therefore, the new creation has been here, or the children of faith has been here 2,000 years after the cross. Now the closing, we're coming to a close of the era of the church age. And the Bible says, God said at the end of the days of the church, there will rise up unbelievers contaminated by false prophets, false teachers, false pastors, false apostles, false evangelists, 
false prophetess, fakers who will not sustain what got us into the kingdom, Jesus, who is the head of the church. Amen. He is the head of the church and the author of the church. He's the foundation of the church. He is the one that established it based on faith. But we are negligent and are incompetent in our understanding of God's word and refuse to obey. So therefore, the Apostle Paul is warning us in 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians of the coming of the Antichrist and the coming of the delusion, the strong delusion. He Let us go over this again. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is the rapture. And 2 Thessalonians chapter uh, 1 is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with flames and fire to take vengeance upon them that know not God. Let me read this. I, I, I think I didn't read that. Look at verse 5. Okay. Okay. He says this. And give you, and, and you who are troubled, rest when the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flame and fire, taking vengeance upon those who know not God and those who do not, do not know God and those who uh, do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Hold on for a second. So the Apostle Paul writes Christ's indignation to those who refuse to obey the gospel. Look what he says. Okay. And we give you, look, he says this. And give you who are troubled rest with us. Look at verse 7. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with what? Those who don't, don't make the rapture when the coming of our Lord Jesus, what's going to happen to them? They shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints, those who have faith, and to be admired among all those who believe, put their faith, not works, faith, because our testimony among you are believe. Therefore, we also therefore we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his of this calling. If you're part of his family, are you part of the reprobate? Are you part of the hypocritical Christian who have no faith? You in you in it for yourself and not in it for Christ. You are not you're not a self server. That's what Paul is saying. Therefore, we pray always for you that our Lord would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill the good pleasure of His goodness and the good pleasure of His goodness and the work of faith and power. The work of faith and power. Now, as we go to the second chapter, Paul says there's going to be an apostasy. <clears throat> uh, 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 the word apostasy, a revolt in the body of Christ where people don't want to hear the message of the cross. They don't want to hear the message of the blood. They don't want to hear the message of the crucifixion. Yeah, we heard that. We don't want we want to hear something new. We want a word from the Lord. We want to hear what the Bible says about the cross. What got you in keeps you in. Now look at 2 Thessalonians. Okay. We well, notice he said faith is the key. God is looking for favor. But look in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Hallelujah. He writes a second letter as he when he wrote in the first letter about the rapture, the second letter is about what's going to happen when the church is gone. Amen. Well, Lord have mercy. Come on.
Look at chapter 2, verse 1. Now therefore we beseech you, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I gather together unto him, verse 1, uh, gathering together unto him, we ask you or plead with you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or word or letter from us as though the day of the Lord had come, that the rapture had come. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come except there be a falling away and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalt himself, that's the false prophet, of all that is called God. Now remember, let's go back to AI. I gave you that video in, in, in the beginning of AI. Where is it in the Bible? I will show you in Revelation. The, the Bible speaks of AI, Think the coming of AI. Who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so he as God. He will sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. Do you do not do you not remember? Verse 5. When I told you these told you, I told you these things. And now you know what is restraining that he might be revealed in his time. The Antichrist is about to be revealed soon. He's probably he's already here. And now you know what restraining that he might reveal in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is happening right now. Hallelujah. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will keep on restraining till it's taken out of the way. Look at verse 8. The restrainer is the Holy Spirit in the church. As long as the church is on earth, he cannot, take it, he cannot make his move. Once God snatches us out of here, then he will make his move. That's what he's saying. Okay. And then shall that lawless man, lawless one be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy at the brightness of his coming. Okay. The coming of the lawless, the man of sin, in one of your translations, he's called the man of sin, the lawless one, one is according to the workings of Satan. Look at that. Look at verse 9. The workings of Satan. Remember I said Satan, the devil is going to produce the unholy trinity. The dragon, the, the false prophet, and the beast out of the abyss. Okay? The beast out of the abyss is in Revelation chapter 9. John saw a star fall out of heaven as an angel. He will open the abyss that will come out an angel who is the angel of the bottomless pit. He's called Abaddon and Apollyon. Amen. He's called the destroying angel. He's bound in the pit, Revelation chapter 9. And this angel is the same angel that gave Alexander the Great his power in, in, in Daniel chapter 8 and Daniel chapter 11. When the, the king of the, of the West, he's called a he-goat with a great horn between his head. He is the first king, Alexander the Great. This angel, supernatural angel, gave this man this type of authority. And now this angel is in the abyss. In the latter days, which is we living in right now, he's going to be come out that pit, the bottom of his pit, and Satan is going to give the, a false prophet from the north of Israel in the land of Palestine, in that area there, in, in the land of Israel, from the north, a false prophet, this angel is going to give this, this, this false prophet supernatural power to deceive them that dwell upon the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do. This is found in Revelation chapter 13 when John sees the beast rising out the sea. The beast I saw was like a leopard. His feet was the feet of a bear and the mouth it was a mouth of a lion that is a unification of the falling Grecian empire that is found in Revelation, excuse me, in Daniel chapter 7. In da not Daniel chapter 8, amen, hallelujah. In Daniel chapter 8, Daniel sees the he horn, he goat, comes from the west, which is the kingdom of Greece, that fights against the Persian, the Medes, and the Persian, Darius, that's Alexander the Great. Then it says, he had a great horn in his head, and the, and the horn was called the first king. That's Alexander the Great. He beheld his four horns. His horns were broken. His horns were broken. That he go from the west is Alexander the Great. He had a great horn. He is called the first horn. That's why we must study eschatology. Things to come. About 70% of Bible, of Bible learning is Bible prophecy. 
70% of it is Bible prophecy, Daniel and Revelation. And we have seen it before our eyes. Excuse me. Daniel, Daniel in chapter 8, Daniel in chapter 8, he sees this he go from the west. That's Greece. Then he sees this horned, two horned ram from the east. That's the kingdom. These two horns represent the, the, the Medes and the Persian Empire. Here, what date is it? BC 333. We have it in history books. It is what the king, the, the great horn between his head is the is Alexander the Great. Alexander of Macedonia. He succeeded his father Philip. This great horn is Alexander the Great, and it says at the end, in ten years, Alexander the Great died, and his kingdom was divided to four horns. Four horns will come out of him, and this is going to happen. Now they said it, history said it came to his four generals. Generals. We have Ptolemy, we have Alexander, we have Cassandra. And we have the Seleucid Kingdom. Ptolemy, Egypt, Alexander, Greece, Cassandra, uh, uh, Turkey, and we have the Seleucid Kingdom, that's Syria. Syria, Turkey, the geographical location, Greece, and we have Egypt. These are the four kingdoms, or the four generals that dispersed Alexander the Great kingdom during the time of his death in 333 in three in 333 when he was in 323 at the time of his death now the bible said in the latter days of these kingdoms in the latter days there will rise up the same horns these four horns will rise up again that it is found in the book of zechariah they will scatter israel the judah okay these four horns is mentioned in Daniel chapter number 7. Hallelujah. He said the first horn represent a lion. He had two wings of a fowl. Two wings. And this, the lion represent a human kingdom. Amen. It's like Egypt. Egypt had, and, and those sphinx, it had a lion's head. A sphinx. These animals reflect the literal human kingdoms. So out of the fall of Alexander the Great in the latter days, the shifting of world power Amen. We have the United States of America here. We have North America here. Excuse me, South America. South America, North America, you have Canada. Now, as we look at Europe, we have Europe here. We have Africa here. But over here in this area here, we have Turkey. We have Israel. It's called the Middle East. Amen. They call it the Middle East. We have about 25 Islamic nations. We have, we, have, we have named some of them. We have Turkey. We have Syria. We have Lebanon. We have, we have Egypt. We have Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, we have Jordan. We have, uh, we have Iraq. Iraq. We have Iran. We have... Uh, Pakistan, Pakistan, Afghanistan, we have Yemen, a then we have the farther north, we have about uh, seven more Islamic nations that came from the root of the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union, that, uh, the Soviet Union, fall in 1989, these, by seven of them, Kakistan, Yurkistan, all these other stands, they are Islamic. So the Bible said in the latter days, if you read Revelation, we see, oh, we see Babylon. Babylon. They're called Babylon. Mother of harlots. Mother of harlots. Abomination of the earth. Out from the, the 25 nations that are in the Islamic world, even more than that, will rise four horns from the former Grecian Empire right over here. Greece, this is where Alexander the Great is. Alexander the Great from the, from the West. In the latter days, 
John sees it. Daniel saw it. God's word is ever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will not pass away. No one want to study eschatology because they don't know it. You got to have the spirit of prophecy to understand this. According to the book of Revelation, when the angel, he said, I, I fell to the knees of the angel that showed these things. He said, I am thy fellow brethren that keepeth the commandments of God. Worship God. For the revelation of Jesus Christ is the spirit of, pro of, of, of prophecy. God has to give you a spirit of prophecy, not a prophet lie. These fake prophecies, prophets, they're not prophesying the word that has already been written. They are blinded by their own satanic inspiration, fake prophets. T talking about a mold controlled Holy Ghost and all the blowing people down, spitting on them, they jumping and doing all type of gyration. That's from the devil. It is witchcraft and and, and these so called well based preachers, sound supposed to be sound, are drinking the Kool Aid and deceiving the congregation. But we better learn what the Word of God says, or you gonna find yourself in trouble with the living God left out here being ignorant. Amen. So we follow Daniel and follow John and everything. The scriptures are not contradictory, but explaining exactly what our Lord is saying. Get ready. Get ready. The time is at hand. We at crunch time now. And they are pushing AI. They are pushing all this stuff. But God said these things must come to pass. They will come to pass. And God said, do not be like in the days of Noah. Eating and drinking and giving in marriage. They was doing their thing until the flood came and took them all away. And only one man was raptured. That was Enoch. Not everybody that says unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of my father. But he that doeth the will of my father. Now everyone that says I'm a saint is not a saint. You ain't. You got to walk in faith. You got to generate faith every day. If you're not hearing the word of God, you cannot trust the word of God. If you're negligent in your knowledge of who Jesus is and not fill your heart and mind and flood your heart with the faith of Jesus, you don't belong to him. That's why the Bible says that a man examine himself, see whether he is in the faith. Amen. We can't walk around like a cartoon character. Think in a delusified way. We got to follow instructions to the one who gave us the word and is warning us. Get ready. The rapture is coming. AI is being prepared by the devil. Amen. So God is going to send a strong delusion. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter number, uh, chapter number 2. Amen. He says this. Verse 11. For this reason, God will send a strong delusion. Deception. That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I mean, God going to damn all these folks? Yes. He killed in the days of Noah. He only saved eight. He wiped out every human being. Read it. Every living soul that had the breath of life, he destroyed. Let me read it to you. Turn to Genesis chapter 6. Hallelujah. I think it's 6 or 7, one of those chapters. Let us read it. People fail to forget God. God is like an elephant. He never forgets. He's not playing with us. But the shady side of Satan want to delude, deceive us by our negligence. Hallelujah. Look at Revelation, Genesis, hallelujah, chapter... Hallelujah. Ah, man, 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 come on. Hallelujah. Ah, come on, Cloud, where are you? Look what God says in Genesis chapter 6. Then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of his thoughts, of his heart, was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorrow that he had made man on the earth. He destroyed every human being. He had do, he's going to do it again. How is he going to do it? He's going to send a false prophet. He's going to send the unholy trinity, the devil, the beast out of the abyss, and a false prophet going to rise up out of the area of the Islamic nations. 25 of them will rise up four horns. Amen. And the grand total of nations will be 17. There will be four, uh, seven nations plus 10. 
the total 17 empires out of the land of, of the Islamic world from Turkey all the way to India will rise up these 17 nations. Amen. There's going to be a, that's why America is depre, de depreciating. Amen. We are going to fall. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. We must fulfill prophecy. America is not in the prophecy. Who's in the book of prophecy? China is. Russia is, and all the nations of Islam are in Bible prophecy. That's the cradle of the human race. Where did God create the human race? He created in the land of the Euphrates, Tigris. Read the book of Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. When God put Adam in the garden, there were two rivers, the Tigris River and the Euphrates River. Euphrates runs all the way to Turkey and Iraq. God is saying, my counsel will stand and I will do all my pleasure. It's time America and everybody know that you are not the boss. You said one nation under God. Amen. You say you're one nation. You better obey God. God, he raises up kingdoms and he'll put them down. He is the one that is in charge. And the end of America has come to a close. And every nation that is contrary to God's word, God is going to bring it to a close. That's why there's insurrection among ourselves. No unity in Congress, nor in the Senate. Democrats against Republicans. It's insanity. This is the most insane generation of America we have ever known. Divided. And we got enemies in the North. Russia. We got enemies in China. Amen. Yet we cannot get our act together. Why? Because Satan is on the move. He is transitioning, transitioning world power over to the Middle East. That area there. The rise of Iran. The rise of Saudi Arabia. These nations will fulfill the counsel of the living God. Israel will rebuild that temple. Israel, after the rapture of the church, God is going to go back to his people, the children of Israel. The new covenant and the old covenant, the child of God must realize, Gentiles, that it was given Given to Israel. When God God sent Moses to bring the Old Testament, God's from the tribe of Levi. God sent Jesus from the tribe of Judah to Israel to bring the new covenant. God grafted us in who were wild olive trees. Read Romans chapter 11. We were wild by nature, paganism, and God brought salvation to a pagan, wicked generation, Gentile. Now these Gentiles are in charge. Now we bring in witchcraft back in. We bring in idolatry back in. We doing what we fake preachers are filthy lucres they after your money not trying to bring enlightenment to the word of God the church supposed to be a church of education not acting and displaying hypocrisy you're supposed to be there to learn the word of God to become students of the new covenant to understand the one who is called the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end the first and the last Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ the son of the living God many of us are ignorant with all of our technology of the living Jesus who died and he rose from the dead we don't want to hear that no more and God said this is the close of the era oh not everybody gonna make it in in the rapture okay keep playing keep playing with your your relationship with the word you get lazy and do everything else and study in God's word and become a Bible disciple a learner of God's word Jesus made it very clear if you continue in my words if you continue in my words, you are my disciples indeed and you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free so going back I showed you the introduction of AI this robot actually Conversation with a human being. Look at the technology and the movement and the eyes and the uh, independent conversation can think of its own. Now, where does it found in the book of Revelation? AI. Let us turn to Revelation chapter 13. Here it will blow your very mind. 2,000 years ago, before there was any airplane, cars, electricity, smartphone, computer, men walked, they had drove horses. They didn't have no technology, electricity. They had candles and oil for light. 2,000 years ago, hear the prophet on the Isle of Patmos. Hear ye the word of the Lord, that his counsel, that his words are true. He said, he's, my words are true and faithful. Who is a liar? The devil. He's a liar and a father of them. Amen. That's why we got to turn our faith on. We got to learn to be illuminated by the light of Jesus Christ so we don't walk in darkness. Look at Revelation chapter 13. I'm motivated in this and motivated concerning this hour. We're about to get snatched out of here. Look at Revelation chapter 13. As I stated, in Revelation chapter 13, 
it shows us the revised power of the Grecian Empire. I mean, as I showed you here, uh, of the he goat represented Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, his kingdom was divided to four horns. One, two, three, four. At the latter end, the days, there will rise up four horns out of the Middle East, four kingdoms out of these 25 Islamic nations, four horns, according to prophet Zechariah, one will be a lion. The beast I saw was like a leopard. Excuse me, leopard. Four-headed leopard. <clears throat> four heads. And his feet, he looked like a, a, a leopard. He had a mouth of a lion. And his feet was like a bear. Then the fourth, you're going to have the little horn. He's called a two-horn, a two-horn lamb. Two-horn lamb. That's found in Revelation 13. Look at here. Revelation 13. I stood upon the sands of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns, upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Total 17. The beast I saw was like a leopard. Read Daniel chapter 7. The first beast was like a lion. They, they coming up individually. A lion, bear, four-headed leopard, ten horns. Now, in chapter number 13, they are unified together. It's meaning the beast I saw was like a leopard. Feet was the feet of a bear. That's a monster. It looked like a leopard. Feet, mouth of a lion, and feet of a bear. They looked like a monster. Some type of monster from a, from a Steven Spielberg movie or something like that. No, it is showing the unification of these kingdoms by the little horn who will be the false prophet. This false prophet who will come from the north according to Daniel chapter number 11. Anyway, we want to look at AI here. Okay, this beast will rise up. Amen. And we're talking about the fallen unification of the Grecian Empire. Okay. I saw one of his heads that wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. That's talking about the fall of Alexander the Great. His, his kingdom was destroyed in the time of his death. Amen. So, so they that, okay. I saw one of his heads wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. While the world is following, a, a kingdom that once existed now is coming back on the scene. A kingdom that once moved out of history in 333 B.C., started in 333 B.C., ended in 323 B.C. at the death of Alexander the Great. Now we see the revision of the kingdom of Alexander the Great. And all 8 billion people is beholding this kingdom rise out of the, the land of, of it, out of the land of the Islamic world to re, re, reunite the fallen Grecian Empire. When Satan will rise and reunite the unholy trinity, the beast, the false prophet, okay, and himself. Okay, look at, uh, look at this. And it, and his head was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast, the kingdom of Alexander the Great. So they worshipped the dragon, the devil, who gave authority to the, the kingdom of the beast, which is of Alexander the Great. Okay? And they worshipped the beast, Alexander the Great, saying, who was, who was likened to the beast? Who was able to make war with him? Because he's going to rule all this area here. 17 great empire nations will rise to give this man strength. Look at this. And he was giving him a mouth speaking great things. And blaspheme was, was giving him an authority to continue 42 months, 42 months, three and a half years. 42 months is three and a half years. Amen? 42 months, okay? Then he opened his mouth and, and blaspheming his God and blaspheming his name. And his tabernacle, underlying tabernacle, that's the church. We are caught up. We're not, we are not going to be down here when this event takes place. God is going to snatch us out of here before that happens. That's found in 2 Thessalonians. That day will not come except there be a falling away first. God, and that man of sin be revealed. The word falling away is, is, is apostasia, but it can be interpreted two ways. The revolt and the snatching away or departure, all right, of the believer. Look what he says. He opened his mouth. 
and blaspheming is God, is tabernacle, the church, and them that dwell in heaven. And them that dwell, once the rapture takes place, he's going to deceive everybody. There's no rapture. There's no Christ. He's going to blaspheme against those who have been taken up. God's church. Because we're going to leave the earth in a moment and a twinkling of an eye. Where's that found? 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We all shall not sleep, but we all shall be changed in a moment and a blink of an eye. We shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Then the earth will go in a seven-year tribulation period. Three, 1,140 days minor, then three, uh, 1,260 days major. Amen? They're so close. God is going to send a strong delusion, not to the saints, we'll be gone, but to those who reject the gospel. And those that are left behind, they must die if they want to qualify for eternal life. They must be slaughtered. Amen. That's, that's found in Revelation chapter 6. He saw the souls under the altar being slain for the word of God. You see, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, John see a nation that no man can number. These are they that came out of great tribulation. They washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. These are the ones that make the rapture. They are slaughtered after the rapture of the church because when the church is raptured, massive anarchy. Why do you need to know this now? AI is here. Everything that has been written is coming to pass before our eyes, but we've been delusified, a delusion. The devil has put over our eyes hypocrisy. We think we are negligent in our endeavor to feed our inner man the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God is not natural, it's spiritual. You must feed your mind, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might know what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. You must fill your mind with the word of faith so you can fight against the wiles and the strategies of the devil because if you walk in the flesh, he'll deceive you. Walk in the power of the spirit of faith through the knowledge of the gospel, God will arm you to protect you at his coming. Amen. Now get caught up with the cool ache of deception. Amen. Let me finish reading. Okay. Verse 7. It was granted unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him to overcome every tribe and tongue and nation. Look at verse 7. The saints he will war with will be Israel. During that three and a half year tribulation period, these saints, these saints, is not the saints in the church. The church is in heaven. The church is in heaven. We escaped that. These saints are Israel because God is going to open their eyes to the knowledge of Jesus. This present day, God has put a scale over their eyes. They can't believe him for our sake. God brought salvation to us. Read Romans chapter 11. God, through their fall, God has brought salvation to the pagans, to the no-good witchcraft workers and liars and pips, whoremongers. We all have sinned and come short. But God has had mercy on us for a period of 2,000 years and delayed his wrath because God has not called the church unto wrath. He's not condoning our mess. He has forgiven us by grace. You are saved by grace through faith. Saved by grace through faith, not of yourself. It's the gift of God. Grace began after the resurrection when Jesus died, going to all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. The good news is trusting Jesus, trusting Jesus, trusting what he's done. And you do it every day. And those that identify with trusting Jesus, he's going to rapture us up. To meet him in the air, not based on performance of the law, but by faith in the Son of God. But don't believe, we don't believe in the Son of God because we are not we are entertainment and entertained by these fake false prophets and fake ministries. But I'm telling you, you better take responsibility on your own soul. Going back to Revelation, the Bible says, All the world shall worship. Look at verse 7. It was granted to him to make war with the saints, Israel, to overcome them, and authority was given to him over all tribes. Look at the word all. Underline that. Over every tribe, tongue, and nation. America is going to be deceived. Canada is going to be deceived. South America shall be deceived. Africa shall be deceived. Europe shall be deceived. Russia shall be deceived. All the 25 Islamic nations shall be deceived. China, Taiwan, all the every one on the planet Earth will be deceived by the power of darkness. Amen. That's what the Bible says in 1st, 2nd Thessalonians chapter number 2. For this cause, God shall send a strong delusion. How is he going to destroy the earth? 
not by water, self-deception, well, so he can burn them. He's going to burn, the Bible said, he's going to destroy the earth by fire. What earth? The human beings. He's going to renovate. When Jesus comes at his second coming, he's coming with fire. Amen? Look in the book of Revelation, book of Daniel, chapter 7. He said, I beheld the ancients of days, and one like the Son of Man. Even Jesus prophesied in Matthew, chapter 24. Then shall the Son of Man appear from heaven, having great power and great glory. He will gather together his elect from the four winds, and we gather together before him all tribes and tongues and nations. He called them goats. He will cast them into the lake of fire. He prophesied before his death that this would come. We at the close of the church, the world don't believe this stuff. Only a child of God is God is speaking to the child of God. He is speaking to the one that say they have faith in the Son of God. Not that I accept you as my Savior, those who walk in the faith of Jesus. One that live in the life of faith by hearing the word of God and confessing what Jesus says about himself. You're not living by yourself. You're living by the faith of Jesus, like Paul said. He said, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me. The life of the believer is the life what Jesus says about himself. But we don't want no boss. We want to live according to our own ways instead of the faith way. Amen? And that without faith, you're not going to make the rapture. You're going to see the gates of hell. Hallelujah. And this is what he's saying. God is showing us an AI. What other evidence do we need? Look, at all, look on YouTube and see all the technology that is happening rapidly. They're saying the technology is displacing the human race. And we're still walking in delusion. They're going to take away thousands and millions of jobs from people. Artificial intelligence is going to control the entire world. Russia is doing it. China is doing it. America is doing it. Uh, India is doing it. The entire world has been uh, drinking the Kool-Aid of AI. And there's nothing we can do about it but get ready for the rapture. Get ready to be caught up out of here. Behold, I come quickly. Do not be deceived as they were in the days of Noah, Jesus said. He said, as it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking. Jesus has given us a warning Behold, I come quickly. Amen. He's at the door. If he came, if he was urgent was in, in, 90, in 80, 96, this is 2023. That's why everything is coming to a close. The Bible says in Daniel chapter number 12, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase and the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. He said many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. We see the rapid in, increasing of knowledge and we are being displaced by artificial intelligence. I work in a place right now. They're displacing our jobs with AI robots. Amen. Why is God showing this to us? This generation is the generation that shall be alive when the trumpet shall sound. This generation shall be alive when Jesus shall ascend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And there are folks on t right now deny the very rapture. If you deny the rapture, you deny the resurrection. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if it's in you, the same spirit shall quicken your mortal body. Body. We shall be caught up if you're in faith. That's why I buy it. Yeah, be warned. Hallelujah. He says, if any man has an ear, let him hear. Look what he says. I'm going to read verse 7 again. Daniel, Revelation 13. It was granted to him to make war with the saints, Israel, and to overcome them. And authority was given him over all tribes, tongues, and nations. All who dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Read that again. All that dwell. You have no hope without dying for Christ if you don't make the rapture. Your only ticket is faith now and glory then. Faith now and glory when he received in us in glory. But if you don't have the spirit of God, you're not in his. You'll be left down here. And the only way you're going to get in, you got to die and give your life. If you can't give your life now, how in the heck are you going to do it then? Great tribulation. Look what he says. Hallelujah. All who dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names have not been written in the Lamb. The Lamb represents Jesus, slain from the foundation of the world. Look, notice in verse 9. If anyone has ears, let him hear. 
If you can't hear, you can't have faith. You have no faith, you cannot be saved. Ephesians chapter 2 and 8, we are saved by grace through faith. If you can't hear the word of God, you can't trust in Jesus. Where you, what, ear, what are you listening to, child of God? He warns us. Hallelujah. Look at verse 11. And I saw another beast, which is a human being. This is the false prophet, right? Verse 11. Rise out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb. And he spoke as a dragon. A lamb, he will come like Jesus. He's a false prophet. He will come in sheep clothing, but he's a ravenous wolf. Amen. He exercised all the authority of the first beast, that's Alexander the Great, which was before him, and caused the earth and those who will not worship the first beast who was wounded by this and lived and was healed. Look at verse 13. He performs great signs so that he it was to make uh, to make fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. We got we got satellites. They can have laser beams from the sky. Man, we, we got supersonic missiles that can go from one country to another from the sky and to blow up nations. Now, that, here John, I don't know what he saw, but he saw something coming out of the sky. And this false prophet is going to deceive people, bringing fire out of heaven. We have that today. Man, what? And this is 2,000 years ago, child of God. Not 8096, they didn't have the technology, as John writes. But John is looking into the future. God removes the veil from his eyes and he sees the coming of the end. And we're in the living, we're in the last days right now of it. And some of us are gonna be, you hear me now, I don't have ears. Wow, 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 ain't no rapture. Go ahead and write your silly comments. I really don't care. But I'm gonna tell the truth. But it's the truth that make you free. I saw a beast coming out of the earth. Amen. He had two horns like a lamb. Verse 13. Like he could come like Jesus, but he spoke as the devil. That's how these false prophets are. They, they say, oh, they come here. They got their little costumes on. They go to these Christian church, blowing people down, spitting on them and throwing their coat on them. They rolling over the floor. And it's ignorant deceivers, witchcraft, satanic. And we, we are drinking the Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid, hook, line, and sinker. The garbage that is spewing out of their mouth. And they, they come in in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are liars. You better, you better know it. Look at this. He exercised all the authority, verse 12, of the first uh, beast that was before him, Alexander the Great. The earth and those who dwell shall worship the first beast. Look what he says this. He exercised all the authority of the first beast in his presence and caused the earth and those who dwell, dwell in it to worship the first beast. Verse 12, verse 12, Revelations 12, 13 and 12 is talking about worshiping the first beast that's Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great is the revived Grecian Empire and the man itself, the human being. They, first I thought they're going to make a clone, a clone of Alex. We have cloning now that was discovered in the 90s. Cloning, but probably before that, cloning. But right now we got AI. It's easy to make an image of Alexander the Great and cause him to speak as a robot through AI and have the intelligence. They have the technology to do it. They're doing it right now in Japan. They're making a Buddha. They're worshiping this Buddha and in artificial intelligence, a god that Buddhism worship, and they got a robot, and people are bowing down to that Buddha. Surely they can make an image of Alexander the Great, a once king that ruled in the Ancient of Days, that God prophesied would come, the children of Zion shall rise up the king of the kingdom of, of Grecia, that's found in the book of Zechariah. God has prophesied it 800 years, 300, let me see, 300 years, 500 years before the birth of the Messiah, that this would happen. When Daniel saw these prophecies, it was 500 years before the Messiah came into the world. Now you add 2,000 plus 500, that's 2,500 years ago, God foretold of these days that we're living in right now. But our eyes and our minds have been blinded by the power of darkness. The power of Satan is real. The devil is real. He's no joke. Oh, these stupid, ignorant preachers. Oh, the devil been stripped. He has no power. That's a lie. God delivered us from the power of darkness, but the power of darkness still has his full power. He did not strip the devil of his power. 
Ignorant. He got you fooled and think he has lost his power. He has not. Ignorant preachers. That's why we have no armor on. He's deceiving us. That's what he wants. When we, when we don't believe that there is a real Satan, a real devil, a real evil angel who is invisible, that is the prince and power of the air, that rule this entire earth by billions and billions of evil angels under his control and demonic power. And some of these churches are under the control of demons, satanic witchcraft, and has, has deceived the child of God, hook, line, and sinker, because of our negligence and not following the first century church that were rooted and grounded in foundational knowledge, following in the footsteps of the early apostles who walk in the words of Christ continually, daily. But this generation want to be entertained, and God got something for you. He started in faith. If you're not in it, you're going to be left here, believe it or not. Look at back to Revelation 13. I'm almost done. I saw another beast coming out of the earth. The two horns is a lamb, or horn of a lamb. He spoke as a dragon. That's the false prophet. This is the false prophet. The false prophet that come from the north of Israel. He's coming from the north. He's called the little horn. He's called the little horn. He's called the man of sin. The man of sin. He's called the son of perdition. Son of Apollyon. He's the son of perdition. Daniel spoke of it. Amen. A, he will rise up with a small kingdom, and he will do, he will unite the whole area of from Turkey, Greece, all the way to India. That whole we one world government under those twenty five or plus nations. Amen. That once ruled by Alexander the Great, he's going to revise them. And he will revive the Grecian Empire. He will raise up a former king that once was on the scene, Alexander the Great, revive his kingdom, and revise the man who ruled the kingdom. Who is the man? That, he's a man. He's called a man he, in the book of Revelation. Look at, let, me, let me finish reading. I saw another beast coming out of the earth. The false prophet. Let's break up verse 12. He exercised all the authority of the first beast, that's Alexander the Great, in his presence. He caused the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That's Alexander the Great. He was killed. He was murdered by, either by poison. He died of a fever. But some said he was assassinated like his father. And he died in Babylon. And as they was on their way back to, to Egypt, and they was going to bury him at, at Alexander, they lost his body. So somehow this little horn from the Middle East, he's going to revive the king, Alexander the Great, I believe, through AI. Okay? You know, it's too late for cloning, but through AI, look what he's going to do. Okay. He exercised all the authority, verse 12, all the authority of the first beast in his presence. He caused the earth and those who dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Look at verse 13. He performed great signs so that even he made fire come down from heaven in the sight of men. This is his false prophet. And deceive those who dwell on the earth by those signs, verse 14, uh, which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. In the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who's who was wounded by the sword and did live. He said, he said, let the earth make an image of him. How can the earth make an image of him? We couldn't do it. They can make a statue. Now, back in the day, in ancient, they made statues of Plato and all these. You go to ancient Greece, you can go to, to the Vatican, all these statues. The statues did not have animation. It did not have AI back in the ancient of days. Now he's telling the world to make an image. The world. The human race in the Greek cosmos. Alright? The world to make an image, an icon. Look at he said. Look at he says. Okay? Telling those that dwell upon the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Who was wounded by the sword and lived? Alexander the Great. His kingdom is revised. When he said he lives, he didn't live yet, but his kingdom has been united by the four horns, the leopard, the lion, and the bear. And the ten, 
the ten horns on his head. Amen. The revision of Alexander the Great Kingdom. He's going to revise the Grecian Empire. Now we need to produce a fake king to imitate Alexander the Great. How is he going to do it? He's going to make the world to make an image. Okay. Telling those who dwell upon the earth, verse 14, telling those who dwell upon the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and did live. It was granted, he was granted power to give breath, pneuma, to the image of the beast. And the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He's going to make the image come alive. You saw the image at the beginning of the class. 60 Minutes did it. This man, the interaction with AI, the skin, look like human skin. The technology is worse, is getting better than that. Something during this time, it's going to be worse. It's going to be, he's going to be like real image of him, like a human being. Look at the technology, child of God. It was granted him to give breath to the image of the beast. An image of the beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. You don't bow down and kiss his image, you shall be dead. He'll kill you. He caused all, all the world, both small, he will call all, both small and great, rich and poor, the entire world, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or their forehead. And that no one might buy or sell except who has the mark of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him count the number of the beast for the number of a man. And his number is 666. Remember the subject. It goes back to Daniel 8, Daniel 7, Daniel 11. It shows you the person in subject is Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great is the mark of the beast. The Great. His kingdom will be revised. This 13th chapter shows us the rise. I saw a beast rise. The angel of the abyss is going to revise the former kingdom of Alexander the Great. Now, let us read some snippets from, from the book of Daniel so I can prove to you it's Alexander the Great. In Daniel chapter number 8. The, Dan, the angel gives the interpretation to Daniel of the vision that he, of he sees the great horn of, of the goat. Daniel chapter 8. We're going to read Daniel chapter 11 to also. In Daniel chapter 8, when he sees the vision of the four horns that come out of the Grecian Empire. All right. Let's give the interpretation to expedite time. My goodness. All right. Okay, I think it's verse 15 gives us the uh, interpretation. Eight, Daniel 8, 15. Then it happened when I, Daniel, seeing the vision, was seeking the, the meaning, suddenly there stood before me having a pres pre the presence of a man. I heard a man's voice between the book, the, the banks of Uliah, who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. The angel Gabriel had to give an the interpretation. So he came near, and I stood when he had, I was afraid, and fell on my face, but he said, understand the Son of Man, the vision refer to the time of the end. Notice he said, the vision is the time of the end. What end? These days right now. Okay? This is the vision of Daniel chapter 8, the end. All right? Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep, my face to the ground, but he touched me and stood me upright. And he said, look, I am making you to know 
what will happen in the latter times of the indignation, the latter time of God's wrath. For the appointed time, the end shall be. We at the end, what, read Revelation chapter 1, to show to his servants the things that must shortly come to pass. Now, when, when Daniel saw this, this was 500 years before the birth of the Messiah. When Daniel saw his vision, it was 66 years after the resurrection of the Messiah. And the Messiah himself appears to Daniel and gives him the vision of the end. In the book of Daniel, Gabriel is giving him the interpretation. In the book of Revelation, Jesus is giving John the message to us to know. Amen. The church, when I say us, the church. The ram without sorrows, with two horns, they are the kings of Medes and Persia. Alexander the Great fought. The male goat is the king of Greece. That's Alexander the Great. The large horn that is between his eyes is the first king. He's the first king that will rise. The second king will be the false prophet when the church is raptured up during the seven-year tribulation period. In the midst of it, the false prophet will rise up and rule the entire world for three and a half years under the power of the unholy trinity. The devil, the angel of the abyss, and that false prophet little whore that come from the north who will rule and everyone, he will make the rich, the poor, and the bond to receive the mark of the beast and Daniel chapter number 8, the former kingdom of Greece, the great horn, the great horn between his head, the goat from the west, the Grecian empire, the great horn between his head is Alexander the Great. That between his eyes, the first king, as for the broken horns, four stood up in his place. Not the four generals, Cassandra, Alexander, uh, the solicit and the Ptolemy kingdom of his general, he's, talk, he's leapfrogging into the future after the, the death of Jesus, after the, uh, the church age, then when the church is taken up, then the mystery of these kingdoms will rise up and deceive all them that dwell upon the earth. Remember the delusion of 2 Thessalonians is not for the church. The church will escape it. You got to read 2 Thessalonians over again to see what is God has given the church to know. It is given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But lazy, trifling, incompetent, don't want to study, don't want to do anything, go about your business. God got something for you. You left behind. Read map through 25 with the foolish virgins who fell asleep. Amen. And they woke up too late. And they began to knock and the door was shut. And those that were ready went into the marriage and the door was shut. God is telling us, be ready. I'm coming quickly. It's time to stop being playing, being complacent, and learn this great and difficult word that God has given us to know. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at this. Verse 22. And the broken horns, the four stood in his place. Four kingdoms shall rise out of that nation. Out of four, he said in verse 22, A 22, four nations shall rise out of the nation of Greece. Let me show it to you in a map. Here we have Greece right here. North, we have Russia. West, east, we have the nation of Turkey. Then we have Cyprus here. And over here we have Israel. Israel. Right over here we have Egypt. This is the Mediterranean Sea. Out of all, going far away, as we go east, you have about 25 Islamic nations. And out of them will rise a king from the north that's called the Little Horn. He will be a false prophet. He's going to rise. It will rise up four kingdoms. The lion, the bear, the four-headed leopard. These are kingdoms that will, and the ten horn, ten horns. Total 17 nations will rise in this area that will revise the Grecian Empire under Alexander the Great. But he's dead. He died in B.C. 323. Amen? But in the latter days, this false prophet under the power of Satan. So Satan is raising up AI to fulfill the word of God. Never in world history has it been the days that we're living in right now. It has never had the technology. Every, we are catching up with Bible prophecy right now. It's time to wake out that sleep and rise from the dead that Christ might give you light. Amen? He want to blind the child of God with these fake preachers. You better take responsibility and learn the word yourself. 
And quit going to these crappers and getting crap in your head. And all you're going to produce is crap. Crap in, crap on, the crapper. Amen? So God is letting us know these are the latter days, the end. Will cause this man, Revelation 13, you cannot buy or sell. He will cause the rich, the poor, the free, and the bond to receive a mark on their right hand or their forehead. They cannot buy or sell unless they take the mark or the number of his name. Now, God got a message to those who take that mark. In Revelation chapter 14, turn there. Any man take the mark of the beast, God's going to damn them to hell. Turn to Revelation chapter 14. Hallelujah. 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 We need it. God is raising up real prophets. These fake prophets, prophet lying. Hallelujah. Don't know nothing. Look at this. Look at the verse, Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. It shows us those who will take the mark of the beast. God got a warning for them. I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those that dwell upon the earth. God got to send an angel to preach because the church is gone. <laughs> There's nobody to preach the gospel. He's going to slaughter all the nations that no man can not going to kill. Who's going to hear it? So God got to send a supernatural angel to come down. Look what he says. Now, in the old Greek, it says the eagle going to come out of heaven. I saw an angel. One said, I saw an eagle fly in the midst of a heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to all that dwell upon the earth, faith, to all nations and tongues and people. When that going to take place? The three and a half years, tribulation period. It's called the great tribulation period. Great. 1,260 days. And that, when that is over, Christ will return from heaven for the battle of Megiddo. But during this time period, all flesh shall perish. All flesh shall take the mark of the beast. But God is warning them. He warns you even though he knows what they're going to do. Look what he says. Then I looked, verse 14. We were in Revelation 14 and 14. I looked and behold a great, I saw a white cloud. No, I don't want that one. The devil is a lie. Okay. Verse 6. I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven after three and a half year tribulation period, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them who dwell upon the earth. During a three and a half year tribulation period, God can send angels to preach to the world. But they're going to be deceived so bad they're not going to listen. They don't want to listen now. Oh God. To preach to those that dwell upon the earth, to every nation and tongue and people. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and glory and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the springs of water. Another angel follows, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is this area here in the Middle East, I told you. Right? From Greece to Turkey, that's called Babylon. That's where Nimrod built his tower after the flood. In, in, in Iraq, that's where they build that tower. That's why I call Babel or Babylon. Amen? And that area there, that's where the cradle of the human race and the cradle of the nations began. When God confounded the tongue, God going to destroy the human race where it began. Right in Iraq, in Babylon. He's going to destroy every human being who refused to obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is warning you. Okay, keep playing. Another angel falls saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. The great city, because... She had become the nations of drink with wine and the wrath of her fornication. Okay? And the third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on his forehead, he himself shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured full strength. You take that mark of the beast, he said, God, you're going to drink the wrath of God, the ordained. The fuming wrath of God, amen, in the cup of his indignation. He shall be what? Tormented with fire and brimstones in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of Jesus Christ is called the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascend up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night, day nor night, who worship the beast, who take the mark of of the former Grecian Empire and the king that ruled it the, is a number of a man. I told you, Alexander the Great. Amen. We make up this stuff. Oh, this 
He's the isn't the the beast coming out of Vatican. He's not coming out of the Vatican, out of out of out of Europe. He's coming out of the Middle East, that area there where Alexander the Great ruled. Obey the word of God. Believe Scripture. And the smoke of their torment ascend forever and ever. They have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receive the mark of his name. Here is the patience and the faith of the saint. And those that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Who will be saved during this time? Only a remnant. A remnant. A few. A few will be saved. A remnant of Israel who will stand up against the beast and against his image. A remnant. Amen. They will be, they will be beheaded. Beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ. That's found in Revelation chapter 15. He saw the souls that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ. A few. Amen. The rest of the world, the whole world shall worship him. The whole world will perish for 1,260 days. The entire world will take the mark of the beast. God called them goats. Amen. God will turn his face to Israel. He will open their eyes to the knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Savior. Amen. Right now, God has sent the light now in the church. Amen. And those that have ears to hear. Once that light is taken up into glory, God is going to send a strong delusion to believe in a lie to bring a human being who was on the scene in world history, Alexander the Great, and came off the scene. And now God is going to send a delusion from Satan. Amen. Amen. Satan with the unholy trinity. Where is that found? Revelation 13. Okay. In Revelation 13. No, Revelation 16. Praise God. That proves the, the delusion of Satan. Look at Revelation 16. Hallelujah. Verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. This is the unholy trinity. Coming out of the mouth of the, the dragon, that's Satan. Out of the mouth of the beast, that the angel of the abyss, Revelation chapter 9. And out, of the, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, Revelation 13, the little two-horned lamb. The unholy trinity work together. Satan, the angel of the abyss, Revelation 9. And the false prophet that rises up in Revelation chapter 13, the two-horned lamb. He will come like Jesus. He's going to deceive many. And the false Messiah. That's why Jesus warned us in Matthew chapter 24. For behold, there will rise up false Christ and false prophets. If it's very possible, it will deceive the very elect. God, God is going to send a fake prophet for three and a half years, 1,260 days. He's going to deceive. And we're at the end. We are breathing right into the end. That's why it's very important for you to understand this child of God. Because the rapture can happen right now. Vanish is too late. Once the vanishing take place, there's no second trip around. You're done. <laughs> the only way you're going to make it, you're going to die. And it's going to be a brutal death. Brutal. Anarchy all over the world. Brutal. And if you, it's hard for you to be a child of God now. You think you can survive after the rapture? I think not. <laughs> Amen. Don't fool yourself. So get be anchored in faith right now. Be ready for the Lord is coming. So look what he says this. He said, I, this is the proof of the unholy trinity in Revelation chapter 16. Okay, look what he says again. Okay. I saw, verse 13, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Three, they are spirits of demons performing signs. They go out into the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to battle of the great day of God Almighty. Here's Jesus' warning. Behold, I, coming, I am coming as a thief. Why is Jesus saying that? People are not going to be aware of this. He said, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keep his garments, your soul, save your soul. 
lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together at the place called the Hebrew tongue, Armen Gedi. Amen. This is, and, and go back to Revelation, back to AI, the whole point of this message. AI is here. Satan is preparing the world to receive the mark of the beast. And the, it will, we, they're going to worship a robot AI looking like a human being. The technology is advanced now, rapidly being advanced. They are pushing it down our throat. And, and there is no joke about that. And I'm telling you, what is our what are you going to do about it? Are you prepared for the rapture? I hope you get inspired today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.